What's up, nerds? So, got you a little cool little uh, video here. Check it out real quick before I explain to you what it is. Cool, basic, right? Yeah, it's the a thing breaking up, exploding. But just wanted to show you. Um, in the fastest way possible uh, what this is doing it's you got four points blown up this block based on um, a radius of, an, of a point object and just the force and then you've got like little pieces breaking off and volume breaking based on velocity and cool shit like that so a couple things I want to show you, not just the cool exploding uh, dynamics part about it, but uh, some control that I'm able to um, some control I'm able to implement inside this rig. So, as you can see, I've got four points, and each of them have a a um, the circle around it, which are instanced, and those create uh, uh, the radius value of these circles, create a radius uh, activating uh, these fragments, which is cool because I'm using a wire connector. So, all right, let me go through this as fast as I can so I don't uh, just ramble. All right, so here is my rig now and I'm gonna build this from scratch um, let me actually let me turn that off okay so if I select come on there we go I got one circle so as you can see these the radius value of this is is uh, creating a radius activation for the fragments and it's all being uh, controlled and connected. And I'll show you how to do that first. But uh, all right, let me start this from scratch. Okay, so I've got this this uh, this box here. It's all, all fragmented into pieces with uh, with ray fire or however else you want to do that and. Okay, so what I want to do is the goal is to pick some areas around here and have them explode out um, using just a, a type of force. Um, okay, so first I'm going to throw in uh, just some point objects. You can use whatever you want. Take one. I'm going to copy that, two, three, four. Okay, so these four points are going to be the point of, uh, uh, just a point of, of uh, the origin of, of where they explode. Alright, uh, so the second thing I want to do is let me freeze these. Is uh, I'm gonna create a a circle here. Create a circle. Um, position it to the point, and I just hit Shift A. It's like a quick align thing. If you do not know, boom, it aligns. Shift A, Shift A, cool. Okay, so, and then just parent that to the point, so, you know, wherever you move this, it goes with it. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to instance these things. Instance. Instance. Alright, parent these bitches. Alright, cool. 
So they all got, woo, yeah. All right, cool. All right. So now I'm going to use a, uh, an animated object to, to activate these things. So it's basically when, oh, let me do it here. Point. Alright. I just change the color. Because I like to differentiate things. Alright, make it bigger. Cool. So now, top view. I'll just animate this thing kind of going through a little path here. So whatever. Okay, so this thing's going one, two, three, four. So what I want to do is when this object comes into proximity with this radius it's going to activate a force that explodes that pushes these frags within this radius out um, and then also wherever this wherever these points are it will also follow the radius of activation so nothing crazy just just a cool little uh, procedural control rig that uh, works across the board with a lot of different things. Alright, so now let's go into the TP. Alright, um, so let's make some groups. Uh, SC shape collision, and we'll put one in there. Call that. This will be forces. And that is going to be, let's start off with like uh, frags. And this one, which is outside of shape collision, all it is is a frag activators, which would be um, these things right here. Uh, and this would be. Um, Activator, which is uh, this thing right here. Cool. So, um, oh, and we need a uh, collision environment. That'll be the floor, which is um, which is this thing right here. Of course, actually, you know what? I think I have one in there. No, it's not in there. But anyway, the floor. Let's make the floor, you know what? Let's make a box. And I have this thing like. Oh, yeah, it's good. Right. No, it's not. Underneath everything. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, I just got this, this, this for lighting and whatnot. So, all right. So that's the floor. Cool. So we got anything, everything in shape collision. Okay. Now let's uh, go master dynamic. Create some stuff here. Okay. So this is this will be. Uh, I named this the minefield. You can name it whatever you want. I don't care. Um, start off with birth. This is going to be. Uh, remove that one. Alright. Nope. Didn't want to do that. Okay. The birth. Um, all right, generator, object to particle, 
name this frags right um, we're gonna just select the uh, frags here yeah pick go to object and particle instant shape and put these two frags okay so we have our fragments in a group cool uh, I'm just gonna hide the geometry there alright so now it's got it in the TP rig and they're just ticks so I'll just go to master dynamic uh, we want to do shell mesh I check this thing here and go to uh, uh, none okay so this wasn't pushed do instant shape I just particle and frags and then boom change the color alright cool so now let's do uh, no I don't want that stupid brain another object to particles and this is going to be for the frag activators which is going to be helpers these four nodes or point objects whatever cool so select these put them in frag activators now you don't need that well do a uh, track at least you don't need instant shape uh, object to particle that's if these are animated at least you'll have um, uh, TP uh, be able to track the animation alright so next one is let's put uh, just a alright so this is the activator right so we're gonna put this guy in there point him to activator same thing uh, make sure you definitely track this one because you have this animating if you didn't have this on if it was a nun you'd have TP uh, creating this particle as just a static it would not inherit the animation FYI so Uh, Alright, let's make the floor, object to particle, floor, select the floor, I can't select the floor, why can't, oh, that's right, this is on helpers, boom, floor, object to particle, instant shape, alright, Okay, now we would like to do activation, which is kind of cool. This is kind of like the whole point. Activation. Uh, Alright, we got another dynamic set, name it activation. Uh, I'm going to put another one in here, and I like to call it uh, distance check. It's this my little, so I kind of dist, D-I-S-T, check. So this set basically um, looks for the area around each object. Um, I don't know where that came, from, that name came from. I just came up with it. So, all right, groups, frags. So we want to detect in the frags group an area that this these circles are uh, creating. So frags, uh, we want a distance node condition. We want a um, uh, oh yeah, niche. We need a p search, right? And we need a group. Where is it? Group. Okay. 
So if particle go. Let's see, particle particle p search, and nearest PID goes into position one. Position two goes into particle, and particle goes into particle. Turn the on on this, output on this. And here is the radius. Oh, and this needs to be set to frag activators. Put the radius to a pretty high number. Um, okay. And guide this group to. Oh, that's okay. So once. Okay, so what we're doing is these frags are inside this group. What we want is to put the radius of the frags, frags that are inside this radius, into another group. They're not going to be moving, they're just activated before they move. So let's make another group called um, uh, fr frags. Cool. Um, so we want to put the frags that get P search is finding the uh, these things, creating a radius around that and putting them into frag active. I'm gonna put this to like uh, purple. Go to match and I make turn um, edit on the fly off. Uh, yeah, so right now, boom, it's making a it's making a nice radius around that. Okay, so real quick, what I want to do is connect. I want to connect the, the uh, radius of these, these circles to uh, this radius. So I don't have to just keep going back into this um, uh, this mat, this dynamic set and changing that. Uh, so first thing is um, select one of the circles, hit control 5 and you'll get the wire um, wire connector controls up you want to go to object radius I'm going to give you this little thingy go to TP click it again go to dynamic master and we want to look for the um, the distance node in the, the dynamic set so mine field which is this dynamic set go to activation distance check and this distance which is this node right here so and do radius 2 and you get this pop up and we want here's the circle and here's the uh, here's the distance node so we want the circle to control the distance node so you hit this arrow right here and then hit connect boom so now if you uh, deselect this node, play with these values, this value, boom, you got it controlling that. And as you can see, if you click this, uh, you can't adjust that, which is cool. So that's what we got. Control on that. All right. Uh, now let's create. Um, uh, let's create the um, the actual activation between this object and this the radius. All right. Um, so I'm actually gonna do the same thing I did for these things. I'm just gonna duplicate, shift, shift click this set, duplicate it, uh, rename it to um, activate. 
switch this group to uh, frag active which would be the purple ones and we want the purple ones to activate and go into another group which has the, f the actual um, explosion force uh, when this thing touches so this has to be the purple ones the frag active this group has to be the activator so the purple ones that are active are um, are searching for a radius around this thing this group and when they come in contact, con contact with each other they will go inside of this group okay so this radius now right now this radius is linked to this circle so um, uh, I like to just I'll just delete it get a nice clean one so do conditions distance uh, connect this to that position 2 to particle I'll put it on and there you go so you got a clean one here um, and then I'm just gonna make another circle circle link it to to this thing alright so we got a circle here do the same thing we did so hit control 5 do object the radius of this circle connected to the dynamic master minefield activation activator distance radius 2 so this radius of this circle is connecting to this node arrow left to right if you did it this way this value is going to be controlling uh, the circle so if I do that you can see like watch Ooh, yeah sweet but we don't want that we want this way connect so now we got see now we got the value here alright so that is basically doing the same thing as these so we want this to be around like that and then this you gotta make sure they go into uh, let's make okay let's make this um, uh, let's name it boom no 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 not boom uh, let's do break no that's still weird um, let's do like a, uh, frag fly that's kind of weird but whatever alright put those in green alright so now you can see it is not working oh that's right so this we gotta do frag fly boom sweet so now we know that the when these come in contact those green ones you can have as much control as you want so that's when we're gonna start to make uh, the force come out sweet uh, alright so let's go into uh, click my field create another set and this force is right uh, we want to do one that's um, explode this is the explode one and then another one that's gravity because we need gravity um, alright so gravity we want to do uh, forces anything in forces uh, is going to be affected by it uh, let's do dynamics force helpers Point three, where is it? There it is. Direction, vector, particle, particle, force, do like 150, something like that. I'll do negative one. There we go, we got gravity. Alright, now the explode. Okay, so this is just a. Um, So we want to first have a force 
that throws these frags out. So it's just going to be a basic kind of spherical force that uh, that surrounds each of these uh, nodes. So kind of similar to this, but at, instead of a group, it's going to be like a force and whatever else. So um, let's kind of do the same thing. So here we're going to do a frag fly. So oh, turn the gravity off real quick. All right, these green ones need to get thrown out in the air. So which are in frag fly? That's what the green ones are. Frag fly. This group. Let's do a same thing. P search particles of that, and then we're gonna do a distance. Put this to there, position one to there, and then we're gonna make a uh, dynamic force. Cool. All right. So let me just stretch this out here. Put the particle into there. Now we need. Um, Okay, so what I'm doing is the P search needs to get, uh, the group needs to be the frag activators. These, wherever, wherever these things are, they need to be, uh, they need to be where the force field is. So we're going to point that to frag activators and make, increase the radius. There you go. Push that up real quick. Okay. Now the direction. So this distance node dig, uh, signifies the direction of the force, as as well as the radius. So direction. Put that as direction. And then what else do we need? Uh, turn this on. Uh, oh, and the position needs to be where the position is of the of each node. Otherwise, without this, this force would have no idea where um, where the force would be. So basically, right now, without without this string, it would be the force would be affected based off of this uh, this object. So we need it to be based off the position of each of the frag activator so that's why you just put that in there all right um, let's turn this force up to like uh, 100,000 very little variation uh, decay do like uh, 1,000 and then turn the type to sphere Um, and then I'm also going to add a spin. A spin, where is it? Spin, and it's going to be the same thing. Uh, put, put this particle to that. And that's it, right? Yeah. Turn this down to like, I don't know, point, point 0.8 or something. Put a variation in there, and that's a good spin type value for this. Okay, so now let's see what we got. Boom, this thing just flies out of there. It's because there's no dynamics attached to it. As you can see, even like turn this, turn this down, and then we get, you know, like, turn the force down just so you can see it. Bam, bam, awesome, cool, sweet. Alright, I'm going to turn that back up. Okay. So one more thing is...
is what I wanted to do is just explode the second this object um, comes into this radius. Like right now what it's doing is the entire time it's in, uh, it's inside this radius it is emitting this force. So it's not stopping until it leaves, which I don't want. I just want it to just one one initial explosion. Uh, to do that, that's why I have this on um, on hidden. So you just do a uh, condition node, do a um, do that particle age, right? So put that in there, and then the output needs to go into the on and change it to enters group. So what this is going to do is second it enters the group it turns on and then turns off so it's just it's it's basically just like one frame you can't really see it now because there is no um, there's no uh, dynamic engine driving these so they're just flying out in space but you'll see that uh, and then one more thing I just want to add these uh, give these things mass uh, mass Make it like a uh, like ten. Cool. So right now we got everything we need. Right. So I'm gonna have one more. The cool one. It's the shape collision. Operators. Uh, shape collision. SC. Point this to the group to SC, deflector to um, floor. And now we got cool seat. Already got um, cool sweet. Awesome. Wow, that's not what we want. Because gravity is not. So that's pretty crazy powerful. Yeah, that's like insane. So I don't know why I put that so high. Maybe because I'm an idiot. Don't judge me. Take a zero off of that. It's not bad. Ah, see, they're still spinning. Got it. So I forgot to turn, put this into this. So what this can do is just make them spin for one frame, just so you get that little bit of variation, and then, boom, they stop spinning because you don't want them to keep spinning. Still crazy powerful, but I mean, what are you gonna do? I know what you can do. You can add mass to these frags. Which they don't have any, that's why they're just flying everywhere. So put a mass in there. Put this to like uh, 15 or whatever. Oh yeah, check it. Boom, see, that's why I had a high value. I remembered, I remembered, but I did not do a step before force. Let's add one more zero back because I was right and you were wrong. Boom, that's still way too high. Wow, I just made myself look like an idiot again. Put like a 50,000. One more time, and then we will continue on with our lesson. That is still pretty powerful. I mean, you know what? I'm just going to keep it like one. Whatever. We'll get back to that. Anywho, so we got, we got these biznatches here. Actually, let's just, let's just get this right. All right? No, no, no dicking around here. I want this to look right. It's, it's kind of moving. Put 
these to like, let's do like a two, 20, 20 grand. All right, so I kind of cheated and paused this shiz and try to figure out what was going on because I forgot. And what was was leave this value at let's say like ten thousand, and this is about four fifty, right? Um, and a get the axis out of here. And pump it into the direction of uh, direction output, and then another thing is too is is you kind of tend to uh, overlook this, or at least I do sometimes. But the mass when you're dealing with rigid bodies is pretty important uh, when you need to get a type of effect. Like if, 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 if for example, I'm, I'm we're we're dealing with forces pushing out these frags, so you want to specify the mass and the weight of these um, these rigid bodies. So size is mass is important needs to be checked, and the value is important. Um, before I used to just kind of arbitrarily punch in a number and just kind of go with it. But what it, it really is important to get that type of look you want. So right now I've got a mass out uh, connected to the frags, which are the uh, these red ones, the static ones. Uh, let's put them at one. And what I want to do is I want to make sure the green fly, frag fly, the active ones, are a lot more heavier, a lot more dense than these just to give it that look. It might not be physically accurate if you're dealing with, like, if you want to get technical and into details, but it still looks way better. Or it gives you the result you're, look, you're, you're looking for at least. So I have this at like 50, you know, like I did 40 or 50 or whatever. And what happens is it'll, uh, it'll just look a lot better. Plus you get more accurate uh, intersections when when you do that so as you can see right now these things are getting flown up pushed up it's still pretty strong but you get the idea so actually let me just um, hide the floor we just play blast that real quick. Active segment, boop boop boop. Okay, cool. All right, stop and play. So cool. I mean, it's pretty strong, maybe too strong, but it's working. Go back, kind of tweak that a bit. Let's go into force, bump that down to like, let's see, like 8,500, right? This might be like 350, 320. Let's turn the spin up a bit. Alright, so, uh, and I would even like turn this mass, this mass down to like 35. Uh, let's play blast that, see what it looks like. Alright, uh, that. so that's kind of what we want, maybe maybe a little bit more. Just stuff getting thrown, it's cool. Alright, so we got a general, I'm just going to raise this up a little bit more, maybe like 9500. 350. Cool, we got that. Um, now we want to add some uh, volume breaker based on velocity. Just break that stuff up even more. Uh, where we go? Okay. Let's start by minefield. Let's create 
Another dynamic set. Uh, so I'll turn this off because it slows everything down. And name this um, secondaries. Create dynamic set. Do this uh, VB01 for volume breaker one. Uh, make another group to where it's going to be volume broken in forces. Name it VB01. So what we want to do is, you know, when these things get thrown up in the air, when the green ones get thrown, based on the velocity, we want it to start to start a timer and, and just start to fracture over time, and then maybe even put those into another group, another volume break, breaker group. Okay. So I'm going to start with frag fly. So then the green ones start here. We want these to volume break. All right. So let's put it out to a uh, threshold. Unhide the velocity. Pop the threshold into the value. I'll do like a three three point five three point three that's good all right now go to your black boxes and go to where is it I think it's uh, helpers m3d machine 3d which is Joe scars uh, collection of black box boxes which usually ships with TP now uh, do timer counter now what you can get rid of uh, is these two and I'm just alt right clicking and these two, you don't really need those all you need are these four and uh, real quick too, what this does is gives you a nice little black box setup now this is the only keyframed one, this is the fade in so when it hits a velocity of three the particle We'll turn the timer on and run through these nodes into this one. And this is what turns on the volume bre breaker. So what we want to do is select the TP, go into your graph editor, and you have this curve that it comes with. I don't really know why this curve is like this, but delete the last key, select this, and make the value to a uh, 1. Because uh, zero, we want 0 to 1 basically off and on. Zero is off, one is on. All right, so um, first we want to all right. So let's add a volume breaker. Operators, volume breaker, volume break. Unhide the on. Pump the fade it on so this is what's turning the volume breaker on pump the particle into particle okay cool so again one more time once it hits the green it gets in the green girl once they start flying up they're gonna hit a velocity of 3.35 when it hits that it's gonna start the timer over 99 frames um, it's gonna run through these uh, these nodes which basically transfers the that data into um, a, a type of value that this node can understand which then turns on this alright so now again I'm going to make give this a mass so whenever you're doing rigid bodies in TP remember mass is important pipe that in there size is mass check that always put this at like a 5 or something okay so a couple things inside this here. First, I don't want once it turn once this timer turns this volume breaker on, I don't want those pieces to to uh, be 100% broken. So instead of putting this to 100, put this I put this to like 45%. Uh, 
So after these green ones get activated and this timer gets turned on, this volume breaker gets turned on, throws into this group. <sighs> Hope you're following me. <laughs> Color the center. And it's gonna over time get turn uh, it's over time volume break those pieces up to forty five percent. Um, and then la one more last thing is to change this group to VB01, which basically you want the volume broken pieces to go into one other group from this. Uh, okay, cool. Hope I'm not losing you. I did have a glass of wine before this, so bear with me because I feel pretty good. <laughs> All right. So now what we should have, let's let's try to look at this. I'm gonna play blast this again. Ready, set. Oh wait, I gotta set the size in this stuff. So let's put this to like 10. Put this to about like 3,000, and that should be good. All right, now let's play blast it. Let's see what it looks like. All right, let's see what this looks like. All right, cool. So they're already volume breaking, as you can see. It's probably, yeah, see, so the yellow ones, or orange, whatever, those are 45% uh, volume breaking, which is cool. Um, now the video, this, this little thingy here I did here, I have them volume breaking into two, two different groups. So once it goes in the orange, then it goes into even smaller one, which uh, takes a lot more sim time. But hey, it looks, it looks pretty awesome. So what I'm going to do is duplicate that, do O2, make this really fast. Duplicate that, make that O2, make this a different color, like blue. All right. Now we're inside this this set. Change this to volume breaker 01 because we want the 01 to then go into 02. Change this to 02. That's all you got to do. And then maybe like turn this down a bit because you're getting pretty small. And maybe turn this down. Uh, turn this down even more just because you don't want all of them like 28% there you go and then turn this mass down a bit to like 1.5 and then that should be good so let me play less this with wireframe so you guys can see the groups Oop. wireframe alright let's see what this is Alright, cool. So, as you can see, purple going to green. The green is the, the frags affected by the force. The orange are the volume broken ones from the greens that are started over time. And then the blue ones are also the same thing, start over time from the uh, orange ones. So it gets you nice looking uh, debris. All right. Next. So this is this is basically it. Uh, right now, I'm not too happy with the explosion look. It's a little weak. So what I'll do is um, throw. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Force. So I'll just throw that up to like 1,500, 15,000, 400, decay. Cool. So this is basically it, right? You, I would just play blast again and see what it looks like. Well, first, let me turn off the secondaries. Play blast that, so I can see how the force looks. All right. That's still kind of crazy. You know what? I'm gonna turn the decay down because I think that's what's making it a little wacko. Alright. 
Eh, it's still a little uninteresting. So we turn that back up. 50. Uh, turn that down. I'm actually going to turn this mass back up. Do like 55. And then, uh, actually, I think my gravity is a little too low, too. So I'm going to do that to like 220. I'll try that. Alright, see so what this looks like. That's kind of okay. This piece is pretty big. So what I would do is I would go in there and fracture that more. This one right here flies out and then uh, add it more. But let's, uh, I'm going to do one more thing. And I think that uh, I'm actually going to actually use this. Turn that down. Turn up a little bit more. All right, get more radius. And actually turn this down a bit. And then see what this looks like. Uh, better view. There we go. All right, all right, all right. Oh, that's not good. I don't like that. I need to fly up. So, actually, no. Let me do this. One, this is the kind of it's the process, man. It's like we'll tweak one thing, tweak another. So this is what I totally forgot about is the force is based off of a radius around these things. So if it's almost like they're kind of getting pushed uh, outwards because they're li they're kind of above. As you can see, they're a little above the. Um, at the top of the objects. So if we just lower that down, we'll still get that that radius, but then we'll get a better kind of upward motion, which I should have done before, but it's just how it goes. Totally forgot. All right, let's try that. All right. Boom, exactly. Still a little strong, so now I can actually turn down the force a bit of this one right here. Flip that down like 10. Okay, so this is it. We're basically done. I just have to turn these the secondaries back on, my volume breaker, sim it, and then we're good. Um, so then we basically uh, then we'd be good. But there's one more thing I want to do is so supervise. Someone comes back and is like, eh. Don't like this. Don't like that. It's too strong. It's too strong. I kind of get annoyed. I, not annoyed. I just I don't, I don't enjoy going back into because I can have like ten of these dynamic sets with forces. So instead of finding the specific one to go in there, what I want to do is I want to go into just the top level dynamic set, right? I want to go in here. I don't want to go into any other set and and uh, tweak values. I just want to go into here and tweak a certain number of values. So I, by doing that, um, if you don't know already, what I do is uh, what I want. First, figure out what types of values you need to to be able to control um, and art direct the uh, whatever you're doing. So that would be for force, I need strength and decay one, right? And then for spin, you want spin time, which is this thing right here. This is basically controls the speed of how fast it spins. So like if the higher the value, um, the slower it takes to spin per second per frame. Um, so I got to hide that, right? I can actually hide spin. So, spin time, strength, and decay. So those are basically the only ones I need. So what I do is just grab strength, pipe it into this little uh, input here, up in the corner, and it'll automatically give you a uh, its own um, uh, scalar value. As you can see, it's a scalar. Decay, same thing. Don't put it into the strength. Make sure you just uh, you drag it into the empty purple area. Otherwise, you're going to get 
this connected to the strength value, which you do not want. So you want its own uh, output. Same thing with spin time. Connect, don't, uh, careful so you don't connect it to one of these values. You want it to do the empty purple area. There you go, boom. So right now, now if you go outside of that dynamic set, which is forces, now this right here has three inputs. So do the same thing, strength, pipe it in there, decay, orange, uh, purple, empty spot. Did I say orange before? I don't know, I can't remember, I'm tired and I'm drunk. I'm not a joint, I'm just kidding. Um, but I feel good. There you go. So you got three more three more inputs. Now go outside of that and the minefield. So now your forces have up oh, three inputs. So now you do you can now you can create some uh, floats. Right? So one, for two, for three. Strength, decay, spin time. And all you do is rename strength, decay, and spin. I'm just gonna name that spin to keep it simple. All right, now you gotta just make sure you have the right value. So 10,000, right, and 150. And this is point, let's do point 0.8. So I'll go back here, 10,000, 150, 0.8, 0.8. So I'm going to turn off shape collision. Let's organize this real quick. Down more. All right, there you go. So here's your nose. Turn off shape collision so I can scrub this thing. You guys can see it. And secondaries. Right. And and gravity. Boom. Right. So these are exploding out. So if I go into these nodes here, uh, first turn on this so I can see it in real time. Boom. So you got this controlling that decay, and then uh, spin time. So there you go. You got three values outside of the entire, um, the entire tree, the entire rig, whatever. And you never have to go back into explode and go into this. It's all connected. Um, and I think I do the same thing with. Uh, yeah, then that's it, really. I don't. I mean, if you wanted to do with the volume breaker or these values, these values, these values, you can do that. So I'll pipe it into uh, this right here. So that's another easy way. But generally, boom. I turn back this back on, this back on. There you go. So uh, there you go. Now this took quite uh, a long time to sim, so I'm just going to go back to my original scene, uh, which is over here. It's basically the same setup, and I'll show you. Um, here is the original setup I made. So here it is, and then here it is uh, cached. Boom. So this is what it looks like. Really nice. It's, this one's pretty violent, so. But there you go. So it is generally based off of uh, you're making you're making an explosion type effect based on just forces, which you have so much control over, and you have control over an object-oriented um, viewport radius. So that's cool with wire stuff. So. Alright, here is it. Hope you guys liked it. Sorry, it's a little too long of a, t a little walkthrough tutorial thing. Um, it is somewhat of a process, so I'll try to make them shorter next time. But uh, yeah, thanks a lot.